Thanks, everybody. Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Camilleri. Our next guest is one of the stars of one of the best and darkest comedies on television. Definitely one of my favorite. You're the worst. For five seasons, Kether Donahue has played Lindsay, a woman who has had a lot of ups and downs, just like everybody else on the show. Take a look. So, what's up? I really think you're gonna regret not having a wedding. Oh my God, Lindsay. Just rent out a Chuck E. Cheese or something. This isn't about our birthday slash wedding. I just wanted to tell you marriage is hard. Your wedding day is the one day it's fun. Seriously, it's all downhill after the wedding. That's just gravity. You're gonna go against gravity? <laughs> I don't think so, Sandra Bullock, star of the hit film Gravity. What? I want a party! Lindsay, stop. Everybody put your hands together for the wonderful Gather Donahue. Let's Woo! hear it. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. oh hello. Your own boo. Testing, testing. Woo! <laughs> Where's my whiskey? No, I'm joking. <laughs> we can get you some. There is some back there. Um, There's Diet Coke in here. I'm trying to get a Diet Coke campaign. Are you really? <laughs> yeah. Mixing it with whiskey? Well, though? actually, over the no, no, holiday. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> yeah. Whiskey. No, Diet Coke. I'd like to, I'd like to work with you guys. Or both, you know, depending on the demographic that we're advertising right. to. Maybe you just make the campaign yourself. Well, so I was at Aya Cash's house <laughs> over uh, the holiday, and I ordered four Diet Cokes with dinner. And she posted an Instagram story like, oh, Kather ordered four Diet Cokes with dinner. Give her a campaign. And she tagged Diet Coke. <laughs> and then a few months later, I got an email from my agent and Diet Coke mailed me a bunch of Diet Cokes with my name on it. Oh, but where's step. the campaign, Diet Coke? <laughs> You're one step closer to yeah, that Diet Coke Yeah, I know. Coke I'm campaign. one step closer to the dream. How? So. This is the last season of the show, right? Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, go out on a high note, right? I mean, five <laughs> seasons of really of really solid TV yeah. is the best way to kind of do it. it you know, you guys probably want to keep working together and doing Oh, stuff. for sure. Oh yeah. I mean, we we still see each other all the time, but yeah, we were all just thrilled to do the pilot together 5 years ago and then when things kept going, we were like, okay, well, we'll this is, everything just was great. 5 years no one could have ever imagined. And then as the show got better and better, I mean, I think it's followed along the lines of like some other good comedies these days, which is instead of feeling like you have to retreat and retread and tell the same story over and over again, it's like go deeper with your characters. You can still be a comedy while plunging deeper into their backstories. For sure. Yeah, it feels like every season, you know, we're all like onions you know you just keep unraveling these layers and you know there's always I, I mean and it's just crazy to me to think that the writers keep coming up with such cool material because after you know for example season two when Lindsay artificially inseminates herself with a turkey baster <laughs> I'm like well where do you go from there like how are they going to keep coming up with stuff. And then, oh, Lindsay's stabbing her husband with a knife. Okay, well. Maybe one of my favorite moments. Yeah, I'm show. like, okay, so they do keep coming up with stuff to top what they, so if we, if we had gone another season, I would be very curious to know what that would look like. Lindsay would just be like killing everybody. What was it like when you got the script for the scene where you were gonna be stabbing him? What was it like when I got this? Yeah, script? when you saw it, like, oh my god! Or did they tell you before it was like? No, I Stephen. Stephen's really good about keeping the actors in suspense. He likes us. We're kind of like the audience, where even as we're filming, we're like the audi The actors are like the audience. We don't know. We only know what's happening in that like block of scripts. So. Um, every time I get a script, I feel like I'm tuning into the episode. I'm like, oh, what does she do next? What does she do next? So I'm kind of reading like a fan of the show, and then I'm like, oh, right, I, I'm playing Lindsay. <laughs> like I have to do this. Um, but I was, I was thrilled when I saw I stabbed him. That was very fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> Has the show essentially just been? I mean, is there a sense that it's ending? Like, I don't know if I'll ever get to do something like this again. Again. I mean, not to say that you won't do great work, but I know I'm like telling my agent, seasons. I'm like, just find stuff where I stab people now. <laughs> and I mean, that's that's like the goal now. Stabbing people in Exa sex scenes. And and artificially and inseminating myself with a turkey baster. And those scripts are hard to come by. <laughs> there are, there's always been sex scenes in, in the show. Uh, and they've always ranged from like, usually they're fairly funny, even if they're supposed to be sexy in some way or the characters yeah. are enjoying themselves. Yeah. Had you ever, had you ever done one prior? prior to the show and what were your thoughts going into the show? Well, yeah, I, I mean, talking about comedy with sex scenes. So 
the there were also funny things that happened in between takes. So I remember um, season one, episode six, when Lindsay's riding a, this little redhead in a van, this like little 19-year-old redhead in a van. That was actually my first sex scene that I had ever done. And in the script, it says, Lindsay destroys Aiden. So I was like, well, I mean... I have to do my job. <laughs> so um, I'm, you know, destroying him. And um, the, the costume department put like layers of underwear on him in case he got an erection. And <laughs> so you didn't destroy his erection. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I have to ask him for permission to tell this story. I'm sure he's fine. He looks good in the story. It's fine. Um, so, and like me and Aya, the, me, Aya, Chris, and us, we talk about this all the time. On one hand, you're like, am I going to be a little offended if he doesn't have an erection or am I going to be offended if he does? Like maybe get a half erection, you know what I mean? So anyway, I'm riding him and the director who was directing that episode. I want to feel validated. Get like half a tub, degree. you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> oh yeah, I heard we could curse on the well, show do. Too. This is fantastic. Fuck. We can do whatever. That's so great. Yeah. Okay. Um, Fuck, half chub, so full chub, whatever. So I was him on the show. And, um, and the director who directed that episode, Jordan Vote roberts he does a lot of takes. So we're on like take 50, and I'm getting tired. You know what I mean? I don't exercise that 50? much. I'm, doing, I'm like really working up a storm here. And... The, the kid looks like he's going to cry in the middle of, the, in, in between takes. So I'm like, and he's a guest star, so I want to, like, make him feel comfortable, you know. Also, this was his first job he had ever booked. He was in L.A. for a whole year, and this is his first job. And the writers were like, dude, like, you better enjoy this because it's all downhill from here, you know. Like, enjoy this. So I'm like, oh my God, are you okay? Like, you look like you're gonna cry. And he's like, no, no, I love, this is great. He's like, I'm having so much fun. <laughs> he's like, but he's like, maybe on the next take, can you grab me here instead of here? Cause I was like, so he opened his shirt. I bruised him. Cause he was so white. <laughs> he is so white. It's like, like and you were really just white. Grabbing tightly at the well, same I'm, spot. Well, you know, I'm destroying the kid. You know, that's right. what it says. And I'm doing my job. I commit. So I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. But I have a photo of it. The makeup artist took a picture. <laughs> and but he in the photo, he's smiling. He has the biggest smile on his face with a bruise. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. That's the end of the story. I love the idea that, you know, <laughs> that he was like, uh, if he had said, like, I'm sorry, but it really hurts right here. And you were like, I'm sorry, but the script says destroying you. Like, and look, that's kid, what if doing. you want to work in this town, you got to commit. <laughs> you got to let me destroy you today. So that was your first one. I would imagine because it said in the script, destroy, because it was that kid's first scene, it broke you in pretty well for the rest of them you were comfortable well, it's kind of like they say like if you make it in new york you can make it anywhere like i feel like after that scene i was like i'm equipped to destroy anyone you know what i mean like i was like <laughs> like i learned how to drive in new york and then in a week and then i felt like i could drive in la and no problem so after that sex scene i was like i feel ready to conquer all the sex scenes. if i can break this boy yeah i can <laughs> break whose first Actually, job it now is now that i think about it he's probably the easiest kid to break yeah. in so <laughs> um, uh, yeah. how did you how did you start acting um well I don't know when I was really little like you know first grade or something I wanted to be a weather lady um I, <laughs> I just loved how they held those little clickers and they're like no partly and they like do this with the screen I say weather <laughs> weather weather people underrated members of morning news teams. They're the ones who actually do work. Well, so I did an interview on KTLA. They're the ones that are actually professionals of some kind. I love have a skill. weather people. Yeah. Like, I love them. I did a, an interview on KTLA, and they let me tell the weather. Amazing. I really sucked at it, though. Like, when it was oh, time yeah. for me to do it, I was like, um, it's going to be 90 degrees today. <laughs> like, I, I was really bad. Can we say, though, like, like, telling the weather, probably hard on first round, Reading the news, not that hard. Well, I don't want to put down, you know, I think all their jobs are very, you know, Good. everyone's, every job is commendable, you know, no matter what you do. So, so you wanted to be a weather I did. Girl. I wanted, I guess I always, ever since a young age, I always knew I wanted to do something perform me or I forget. I'm, when I was nine, I asked my mom to put me in acting class and then just kind of. 
I was always in school plays, and then one thing led to the other. And uh-huh. you got on You're the Worst. What was the what was the whole so, process like so being on my, You're the Worst? My process, though, being a working actor <laughs> was kind of backwards. Like, because I, I hate when I read interviews and I see interviews where people act like it's so easy. Like, oh, yeah, I just got an agent, and then I'm on a show. Like, no. I was rejected so many times. I booked a series regular when I was 17. And then after a series regular, I got cast as a, a guest star. And then my next job after that was a co-star. And then I was doing a commercial. Like, I worked backwards where I booked, like, um, yeah. I had a, before you're the worst, I was auditioning and unemployed and working on and off for 20 years. Like, a really long time. Um, and then officially how you're the worst came about... I had, because I'm a native New Yorker, and as a lot of native New Yorkers will tell you, we kind of li- like to hate LA. You know what I mean? So when I moved out to LA, I was like, you know, I was like, well, I still have a 917, and I still have my, you know, New York driver's license. Like, I didn't want to. How long did it take? It took six years to admit I lived there. How so, long did it take for you to start loving LA? Six years. Oh, okay. Well, till I started working, <laughs> till I was able to pay my rent. Right. So I moved. In 2013, I moved back to New York. I was like, this isn't working. I'm not getting work. I broke up with, like, you know, an eight-year boyfriend I had dumped me. Like, I was having the worst time of my life. And I moved back to New York. And I, but I got to a place, like, you know, they say, like, on Super Soul Sunday and, like, meditation shows, they'll be like, oh, you just have to be at peace with yourself. Like, I did have a moment where I was like, I found myself, like, grateful, like, auditioning for toilet paper commercials. Like, I, I went into, like, a Charmin commercial, and I was like, oh, I, like, improvised in that audition. And, like, I felt really good just being me. Well, they say that about acting, though. If you're just auditioning, treat the auditions as if they're work. And exactly. Try to get and out of them what you would get out of the role. Down. So, like, I found myself very grateful just anything, right? So, I booked an Audi car commercial, and Jordan Vote Roberts, who directed You're the Worst pilot, he directed the commercial. Wow. So he referred me to the casting office. Yeah. That's how it. Yeah. So like, if you want to work in LA, just like leave <laughs> or quit the business. And I, same thing with Aya Cash. Mm-hmm. She was at the end of her rope, and she was ready to like open her own antique shop. Right. And then that she booked You're the Worst. So. And yeah. Wolf of Wall Street, like, just before that as well, I think. Oh, too. yeah. She was so good in that. She's really great in that. Oh, she's She's wonderful. the only, maybe, I mean, m- maybe Margot Robbie as well, but she's really the only woman in the movie who's expected to hold her own with all the boys in the room. Oh, the yeah. yeah. Talk about destroying men. <laughs> she destroys, <laughs> she destroyed me watching it. I was like, whoa, sh- don't piss her off. <laughs> she could yell. So what has been your most, I mean, because as much as you're the worst as a comedy, you guys as actors are tossed into the fire a lot. You have to oh, do yeah. lots of crazy things. What's the hardest scene that you've had to do on the show? I do. I mean, I know I keep going back to the... Um, Destroying Aiden? Sorry, I'm admitting it. I'm trying to see what I look like on the screen. <laughs> I'm like, okay. looking at me film. Okay. Um, when you're talking to me, I'm looking at me. I'm looking at I'm my just monitor. being honest. Um, I know I keep going back to the stabbing scene, but that was hard in the sense that it felt it was very choreographed and I had just come off of doing Grease live so I I was thinking of everything in dance numbers like five six seven eight so like stabbing him was like five six seven eight you know what I mean like and it was a real knife it was a real knife and Alan McLeod who plays Paul he had like styrofoam and there were stunt coordinators who had like if I didn't stab him in the correct location, he would die. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I had to be on my shit. But that also probably... I'm just trying to curse. That also probably awesome. fed into your performance in that moment as well, because your character is, yeah. is like, nervous yeah, while doing... Yeah, I look doing, paranoid, because yeah. I could kill him. <laughs> like, yeah. Literally, both yeah. in the show and literally. <laughs> yeah, so... The lines were really blurred. What's real life? What's acting? I don't fucking know. What What has it been like on the show to build the surrounding cast? Because it's always been... I'm sorry, say that again? Build the surrounding cast. Mm-hmm. From the beginning, it's been the four of you. Yes. But throughout the five seasons, we get we get Janet Varney. We get Paul. Oh, yeah. We've gotten a few other people joining yeah. the cast as well. How has Paul it been? Paul F. Tompkins Paul this F. year. Uh, He's there's so a, there's good. An episode 
Doug that Benson. That hasn't come out yet with Paul F. Tompkins. That is pretty oh amazing. Oh, my God. For everyone who's watching who's up to date, you are going to love next week's episode of Paul F. Tompkins. Talk about, like, being afraid of people killing you. <laughs> a teaser so what has it been like to watch them build the supporting cast with you guys oh my god we have the best supporting cast i i don't even think of them as supporting cast at this point we're all everybody's kind of in it together we're all family at this point todd robert anderson is vernon I, i mean everyone's fantastic um yeah and we have a i mean wendy o'brien is our casting director she's phenomenal um, and you know what? I will say, because Stephen Falk um, is a, a very hands-on showrunner. He's so involved in every part of the show. He's there on set every day. And something that I was really impressed by, which I, I didn't know until like two seasons in, he's so specific with casting. He's even hands-on with casting the extras. So like He'll be looking at a screen and like circling something, Xing something. And I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm handpicking every single extra that's going to be in the, the bar scene next week. And I was really impressed by that. Because I just thought with extras, like, sure, you, you say the, the, the age range and everything of that. But like, he actually, like, I thought that was cool. Meanwhile, he's also. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I thought that was Writing cool. multiple episodes, outlining the whole season with his writer's room as well. Yeah. Did an incredible amount of stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, but the casting, is, I mean, we just got so lucky. Um, you get the sense while watching it, no matter how dark the show goes, that everybody really enjoys the work and is having a good time on the show. Like, it's never hit any moment where it just feels like you're watching people hit their mark and get some jokes out and then get out of there. It really feels like everybody's having a good time on the show. Absolutely. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, and it, you know, I think things translate on screen, you know, you can, you could tell if some actors are just plopped together and they don't really get along and you could tell when people have actual chemistry. And so, um, chemistry reads were definitely a big part of the audition process. You know, I, me and Aya did chemistry reads together. You guys have chemistry right off the bat, like knew you were going to be friends right away? Yeah, well, we had vaguely known each other because it, um, we were both New York actors. So, like, she lived, she's not from New York originally, but she lived in New York. Well, she still lives in New York. Um, she lived in New York when she booked the show. And, like, pilot season every year. And isn't Desmond a New Yorker as well? Yeah. That's, that makes so much sense now that we're going yeah. over this because it's such a New York show, but in yeah. L.A. It's such yeah. a sort of old school New York attitude. Yeah. Transplanted to L.A. Yeah. yeah. And I just remember every pilot season, you know, I would see Aya Cash's like headshot and all the casting director's walls. And I would be like, <gasps> I was intimidated by her, to be honest, because she booked a oh, pilot every season. And in 2010... Me and her both did pilots in L.A., and we met in an elevator, and we were put in the same hotel. So I get in an elevator, and I she has she had glasses on, and she was holding a coffee, and she looked really cool. And I was like, oh, I was like, you're Aya Cash. You're on all those, like, casting directors' walls. And she was like, oh, yeah. She's like, you're Kether Donahue, right? And I was like, you know who I am? She's like, yeah, you live in New York. So we had briefly met in an elevator in, an elevator in 2010 where I was intimidated by her. And then we met again at the chemistry read, and I was like, oh, you're the girl from the elevator. And yeah, so clearly we had chemistry because we <laughs> met in an elevator. Um, yeah. You know, obviously you can't give any spoilers, and we wouldn't want you to, but what can you tease about where Lindsay goes in this final season? What was it like doing that with her, taking her to the, this, these yeah. last episodes? I mean, without giving uh, too much away, I will say she, you know, she actually ends up somewhat normal. <laughs> it's uh, shocking I've ended up somewhat normal after five years uh, playing her, <laughs> barely. Um, uh, but it's nice. She, I think she's, she's headed in a direction of some sort of stability, and, um, you know, like, I think th- the one of the last episodes when we see her and Edgar mutually decide to stop being friends with benefits, 
I think that was a, ver a huge sign of emotional maturity for her that we haven't seen. Edgar's really pulling everybody towards maturity this season. Yeah, well, he's like the... He, Desmond always says he's the moral compass yep. of the show. And I think that's true. Um, so, yeah. It's so funny that he's the moral compass, but none of his friends that he surrounds himself with are good moral people so he gets to kind of always be the person right yeah right? like way to be a moral compass if you're surrounded by dirt bags yeah know. like i wonder how he would be if he was surrounded by other moral compasses right <laughs> yeah he might not be the moral compass and he might be the dirt bag maybe it's a comparison. self maybe it's like a selfish thing yeah maybe he's, he's really the dirt maybe he's the dirt bag because he's around myself with bad he's people like so a i can feel better faux moral compass Mm. We'll have to take this We're getting to the root of uh, how evil Edgar really is. Uh, <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say fuck to you. So fun. Uh, we actually get to say fuck on the show this year. Is that not... Were you not allowed to do that before? We, you know, because I noticed in the script, I was like, I don't think I've ever seen the word fuck so much. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's even an episode called Fuck Week. That's I mean... <laughs> Which I was prepared for because of season one. <laughs> you had to destroy a lot. I, did. I got destroyed. <laughs> got uh, one About question. time, right? <laughs> uh, who has a question? Who's someone right here. Hi. Hi. Um, so I have a question from our website. Oh. Um, so of all the cast members on You're the Worst, who would you say is the most like their character in real life? Oh, I'm so happy someone else isn't being asked this because they'd probably say me, right? <laughs> um, uh, Do you hmm. feel like you're the most like your character? Mm, let's pretend that <laughs> you didn't ask me that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, hmm, who is the most like their character? It's a good question. Oh, God, I don't know. Well, ooh. Oh, I don't know. You I'll have just so say many me. answers that you just went over in your. Head. I know. I totally just blanked. <laughs> I'm like, how bad do I want to make myself look right now? <laughs> in what way do you think that you're like? I think, I think the attributes I share with Lindsay are probably like the impulsive, um, living from the id, kind of quality. I can relate to that. Yeah, I'll just say that to answer because I feel like I could, I could be sitting here meditating on it all day. Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to miss, uh, do you miss Lindsay already? I do. But I feel like I already said goodbye to her. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, She's still standing there? <laughs> um, I feel like I already said goodbye to her uh, in many ways a while ago because, because there's so much... Build a, oh, build. <laughs> <We're on> build. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nailed it. Uh, fuck, man. <laughs> um, there was so much build up to knowing it's ending. Mm -hmm. So I think we all, you know what I mean? I think to just, I think, I feel like I already was like trying to process it ending and not be so sad. So I feel like I said, I feel like I said, you know, put Lindsay to rest. Say goodbye to her. Well, I'm going to miss the show. I love it. I'm so glad that you came in to talk to no, us. Oh, I'm happy I got to come here before it's over. Yeah, hopefully come in for whatever the next thing is. Yeah, after my Diet Coke campaign. I'm in for the Diet Coke <laughs> I, campaign. Hopefully, which I'm creating myself. <laughs> uh, everybody give a big round of applause for fucking Kether Donahue. Fuck! Fuck! <laughs>